Annyeonghaseyo. My name is Kyle, and I am part of Korean Adoptee Stories. And I am really excited because I'm here talking with Derek Fisher and Jody Gill on uh, camera right now. And I wanted to discuss more about uh, their foundation, Guide. And I was wondering, could one of you explain what Guide is and what are you trying to uh, accomplish with it? Hi, well, my name is Jody. Thanks for having us tonight. Uh, I want to explain that Guide Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And the mission of our foundation is Korean adoptee education and the mental health journey. Uh, our ultimate goal is to reduce the suicide rates that, um, that, um, that exist amongst um, this community. And um, we're, going, we're going to start with embracing the Korean adoptee group first because our team members are Korean adoptees. However, we hope that we can build a model to uh, embrace all international adoptees and transracial adoptees with this education. Okay. So how did you guys end up working together? Well, that's kind of a cool story. Um, so, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Derek Fisher. I'm the other co-founder of the Guy Foundation. And, uh, you know, the first project really came about because we have a unique opportunity uh, during this global pandemic where everything got kind of put on pause. And during that time, I approached Jody and said, hey, um, I have an idea and I want to work with you because of your connections with the um, with, with her work. She worked at a, uh, a university in Oregon and there's a project that I thought we could really kind of incorporate some of the students to do some of the work and really lessen the load and, and make this project really kind of launch. And that project was um, a, a handbook for birth family reunions. And so, you know, while everything's on hold and people weren't going back to Korea, what I thought would be very interesting would be to use the uh, lessons and experiences of adoptees that had gone back to Korea previously to meet birth family members and create this guidebook that, uh, you know, future uh, Korean adoptees could use to make sure that their reunions are as successful as possible. And so, you know, early spring, late winter, you know, having that conversation with Jody, it was kind of fortuitous because while we couldn't necessarily use the students because they got sent home, what it did allow was Jody to have some time that she normally would be, uh, you, know, you know, traveling all over the world, trying to recruit international students and she could kind of devote it to, to this project. And so really the origins of, a guy, of the Guy Foundation is is this first you know inaugural project that we're working on and the uh, the beginning of that was uh, a fortuitous conversation in the midst of the world craziness that we're still living in so you know it um you know i guess one positive aspect and there's been a lot of tragedy uh over the past few few weeks and months uh but something that uh you know i think potentially wonderful occurred are the beginning steps towards uh, working towards create um creating um, a much more cohesive and unified community for the Korean American adoptee world, which we call CADS. So uh, when we talk about CADS going forward, that's what we mean, Korean American adoptees. Okay, great. So you have actually a personal story with why you uh, created this uh, guide foundation and also a guide book. Could you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, it's something that uh, it, it's it's very frustrating to me because I think in my life I've consistently received things I never wanted, but other people covet. And, you know, uh, thousands of cats uh, desperately want to reconnect with their biological family. And that's something that I had no interest in whatsoever. And so, you know, as luck would have it, since I have no interest in it, it's going to fall in my lap. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, two years ago, uh, out of the blue, I got a letter from Eastern Social Welfare Services, and it basically stated that my biological father wanted to see me before he took his last breath, which is kind of dramatic to get in the letter. And so I responded, you know, kind of in a dramatic way. Um, you know, I, I, I was kind of shaken and in discussions with my wife. Um, I didn't really want to go uh, because I, I was a 
I was older when I was adopted, so I had very um, unfond memories of my biological father, and I, I just didn't have an interest in reconnecting. But um, the simple, decent thing to do is to assist someone uh, as they transition from life to death, and uh, I felt that I owed just any human being that compassion. Um, I also stated, I, I was trying to get out of it a little bit, so my, my weasel answer was, well, I'd love to do it, but, you know, uh, it's in the middle of the Olympics, and uh, the flights will be too expensive. And uh, it turned out that there was a very reasonable flight, uh, quite affordable, but uh, it required me to leave at uh, 6 a.m. the next morning. So, uh, you know, essentially about 12 hours after I received this letter, I was going back to Korea for the first time in 38 years to meet a biological family member with no preparation whatsoever. So, you know, I had never wanted to do this. Uh, I never studied Korean heritage and culture. Um, you know, honestly, before that letter, if you had you know told me that I was Korean, I would have been angry at you and said, I'm, you know, English and German. So, um, you know, now I'm on this plane. And uh, obviously, you know, most people, when they go through this, they have a little bit more notice than 12 hours. So they do get to plan a little bit. And because I didn't, and this is a source of amusement for Jody because she's been back to Korea so many times. Um, but, you know, when I give her details about what I did for that first time I went back two years ago, um, you know, it's just, I mean, I made every mistake possible. You know, it, uh, I might have set the Guinness Book of World Records for the most inept trip. And, uh, you know, it definitely showed in the quality of the trip, in the uh, my reactions and expectations of that first reunion uh, with Han Mu, who's, uh, who I call my biological father. And, uh, and so from that, you know, what I don't want is for anyone else. Uh, I mean, guys, look, here's the reality. It's an expensive journey. It's, it's a huge amount of time. It's a huge amount of money. So why run the risk of having it be horrible? And if what we can do is take the lessons learned from the people that have already gone on this path, including people that made mistakes like myself. And don't get me wrong. There are other people that have had an amazing outcome. There are people that have gone back to meet their birth family and now live in Korea with their biological family members. And so what we want to do in this handbook is to you know, give some advice and uh you know manage expectations so that people can know what could happen from both ends of the spectrum so from the horrible you know trip like mine to the amazing trip like others who now live there and everything in between uh what we can do is we can give the greatest chance of a positive experience for the cat that goes back to meet biological family members okay great so Jody, uh, you seem to be pretty well versed in the Korean culture and community. Have you had a chance of uh, reuniting with your family as well? Did you have uh, generally good experience or bad experience with Korea? Uh, that's a good question. I first visited Korea in 2015 and I initially asked for Holt to help me find my birth family. Uh, my expectation is they would not be able to find anything. But during that trip in Korea, you know, I did go to the office and they sat me down, looked at my files, and it was as I thought. Um, the birth parent has to come up to either, uh, you know, communicate with the organization or do a DNA test, and they had nothing. What I did uh, accomplish, though, is I was able to go visit the whole Ilsan campus and um, that is a campus that has about 200 residents that are, you know, that have no family. Um, and it was like a kind of a firsthand, this could have been me moment, but I also was able to like meet the leaders there, uh, Molly Holt and Dr. Cho. And those leaders were there when I had come to um, the orphanage at that time back in um, the 70s. So that to me was a bit um, what I would say, um, ref to have something uh, from the time that I was a baby um, to that first visit that I went to Korea. Yeah, so I guess my name is Travis. I'm identical twin brother with Kyle. Uh, first and foremost, I understand like we, Kyle and I have a very fond idea or a strong idea on what the group is about. But what about for people that are CADs that are unfamiliar with this project and who are you guys like looking for i know i guess we could be an example uh we the reason why we're uh talking to jody and uh derek and their guide and the guidebook because we were they were we were asked to work on a cover for them and 
I know we offer some sort of our, the artistic and creative and, and design sense. What other people are you looking for and what roles uh, are you guys looking for? You know, that's a really good question. And, you know, kind of let's 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 clear the uh, air on something right now. And that is that uh, when Jody and I had envisioned the cover and what we wanted the artwork to look like, we had uh, two names in mind and two names only. And uh, they were Kyle and Travis Bayless. So and the reason why we only had one entity in mind was because, you know, we we saw the artistic ability, but, you know, candidly, talent and 25 cents will buy you a cup of coffee. And so there had to be something uh, beyond that artistic ability that that made us so eager and desire, uh, desirable to to use your work and have it be uh, representative of what our project is. And uh, it, it's kind of a huge honor because um, this is the book that, uh, you know, people will uh, see throughout the world. This is a book that will live in posterity. And uh, the work that, that the both of you did uh, has been incredible. We, we can't share it yet. I mean, we have the, almost the final version. So you guys are going to have to take our word for it. But uh, they absolutely outdid themselves. But the question that uh, they're asking is, kind of like why them and, and who are we looking for and ultimately the reason why them is because uh, what we want to do is we want to celebrate um, the unique elements that make people within the CAD community special uh, we are a resilient group uh, we have overcome obstacles we have over we have uh, achieved things that the the average American just can never even fathom uh, and, and honestly, the average Korean can't fathom, and then the Korean average Korean American can't fathom. We have a, a unique identity, we have a unique culture, and um, you know, Kyle and Travis really uh, just capture uh, that that spirit of perseverance um, combined with compassion. Um, they they do a show to do what to to help spread a message and, and bring awareness. That uh, that means they have to think beyond themselves. And uh, so, you know, what we have is, you know, artistic ability, we have compassion, um, and those are, they're kind of special. And so the people that we're looking for, the guys, uh, they are similar to you, you know, maybe not as crazy, maybe not as, you know, uh, wacky and off the wall, because I don't think anyone really could be. Um, definitely set the standard for that, right? Um, but you're more than crazy and kooky, you know, you're kind and you're compassionate and you're thoughtful and, um, and all those intangible skill, uh, attributes, um, they definitely are expressed in the work that you've done on the cover and the back, you've forgotten the back as well. So, um, you know, there's two, there's two in the twins. So one did the cover and one did the back. And, um, uh, I think Jody and I argue all the time uh, between ourselves, which one's better, the cover or the back. So we're, we're just so proud and pleased of, of what you've produced for us. And uh, you know, I'm going to let Jody kind of talk a little bit about, you know, some more attributes that we're looking for as far as, uh, you know, volunteers. Like what things partners. need to get done, uh, I guess, if you can talk a, a little bit about that. So as uh, Derek said, the book is a starting point mm -hmm. and, for me personally, I am very new to this community, only about three months new. What I found to be very fun in some of the posts mm -hmm. I was responding to, but the overall feeling was, gosh, some of these posts are very, very heavy. How do we respond to that? So while we um, focused on the book because I am able to contribute to the practical travel and culture mm -hmm. portion of the book, there was this overlying, there was this, um, I would say, underlying feeling that we all had, like, what can we do? Because these posts out there showcase pain, in my opinion. So it really did, like, connect with me. How can we help? Because in my, um, you know, my professional world, I'm helping the international community. Now, what can I do for the cats? What can we do it for the cats? So both and of you actually, uh, in your opinion, there's actually a lot of pain and suffering amongst the Korean adoptee community. I know Derek was showing that they have a very high rate of suicide, and that's what you guys are trying to involve and bring everyone with differences together. Yeah, from my perspective, because like I said, I'm very new to the community, and I was looking for, hey, brother, sisterly, um, more of a 
friendly yeah. connection and i did find that there's mm-hmm. definitely people out there who are more lighthearted and post pictures of their food but then every now and then you get these posts of um you know they, they talk about like they don't want to live anymore or something like that and it really did shake me up like wow this is a lot more serious than i expected and um when we kind of put the feelers out there and i'm always asking derek because he's been in the community for a while he seems to be very very dialed in it when we put that word out there it felt like all of these other volunteers said yeah let it let's help let's do something so just this organic group of people came together and that's when we said what do we do we need to create a nonprofit foundation and be an educational resource it was just easy like it was an easy response to what was out there and it seems like with your guys's background you're actually pretty familiar with uh nonprofit organizations and how they work yeah you know i had uh, I, I created a, a nonprofit uh, before mm-hmm. um you know my wife works in the nonprofit world and uh so it's it's a natural avenue you know i just think about it for a second if Jody and I created a for-profit business and attempted to monetize on the pain and suffering of our brothers and sisters in the community, I don't think we would be very um, good people, right? And one of the things that you guys have done is you've had honest conversations about mental health disorders that do um, have a greater impact with uh, our, the CAD community. And that's the reality is that adoption is a traumatic event. And, and people manage trauma in different ways. But uh, there is no shame in um, the Korean adoptee who struggles with the correlation and uh, results of you know, potential drug and alcohol addiction or um, mental health disorders um, or you know, suicidal thoughts or being in a, um, in a toxic or abusive relationship because trauma is difficult. And international transracial adoption is one of the most traumatic events uh, anyone can go through. And think about it. Um, most of us went through it at, at a pretty early age. And, uh, you know, I came here a little bit older. And uh, so my path was, was, you know, potentially a little bit easier and even more challenging um, than those uh, of you that came as, as infants. So um, the structure of it has to be a nonprofit because... Uh, what our mission is to do is to help. Um, it's not to get rich. Um, it is to unite. Uh, it's not to go public. It is to heal. Uh, it is not to you know, create a global brand. So, you know, the, we have to have an honest discussion that normalizes pain, that makes sure that adoptees don't feel that they are abnormal, that there's something wrong with them, right? Um, that, uh, you know, we have to just candidly discuss what we've gone through so that everyone can know they're not alone and that uh you know kyle and and um and travis what you guys have gone through um i think you'd be surprised as you talk to more and more adoptees that they all kind of raise their hand and go yeah me too i struggle with depression by the way hands up i struggle with depression i i I, I struggle with bipolar disorder you know i struggle with post-traumatic stress disorder so, you know, all those things that, uh, you, know, you know, debilitate somebody, um, it didn't stop, you know, myself from, you know, working with Jody and, and being proactive to take positive steps um, to help us manage better. Some of the volunteers I know that uh, have already started and we're creating a pretty big momentum here, but you actually do have like a therapist and a psychologist that kind of has that kind of background that could actually maybe uh, aid in some type of healing work possibility oh no we've done one better than that oh yeah yeah can you describe describe uh, a bit about it yeah why don't you tell them about the uh, the mental health task force and the mental health team well i uh we have a team member uh, moses farrow who is in charge of this and he is a licensed uh derek help me out with the name the letters Marriage uh, family uh, as a LFMT, licensed family and marriage therapist. Service. But the important thing is, is that his focus is on the experience of an adoptee. He's got mm-hmm. some, you know, he's got a specialty in that area, and uh, he will be driving that force. Um, you know, I think I don't want to say too much because I hate to put um, our 
projects out there, but there's some really cool things happening uh, with the task force with that. I can speak on behalf of what I would like to see uh, from the start point of the handbook, you know, for the birth family reunions, I'd like to see it go into like the handbook for adoptee parents, the handbook for adopting young adults, the a handbook for adoptees as, as parents, not just the adoptee parents, but like me as a parent who is an adoptee. Um, I could see that series really growing. Uh, but as far as um, the mental health, um, Moses is working on some really cool projects in that. Uh, we are also working on, you know, the what if, the what if possibility now that we've had this global pandemic and, and Derek has been working with Susan Cox on the Zoom sessions and people are gathering, people are connecting and we're seeing some great momentum in that. What if we could do something in that area related to um, topics in the mental health area? So one of the questions I have is that I see that you have involved some Korean adoptees who wrote in your book are you guys still looking for volunteers for that or, or surveys too? How, how guys, I know you guys are asking other KADs uh, to fill out uh, surveys of how their uh, reunion went in Korea. Yeah, you know, the reason why we want survey participants uh, is, is two reasons, right? So the first one is to provide statistics that uh, will allow, again, the CAD going back to Korea um, to kind of have a sense of uh, preparation and um, an expectation of what this journey is going to involve. And, you know, um, facts don't lie. And so, you know, when we are discovering that, you know, over 50% of cats that went back to uh, Korea to reunite with biological family members, when they come back, actually have a better relationship with their adoptive family, that's a really kind of cool statistic. You know, and it's one that's uh, a little bit surprising. So those are things that we can kind of share to um, to help that, you know, that adoptee tell their parents, hey, you know, don't freak out. You know, this could actually be really good for us. And they wouldn't have known that if don't, they don't read this handbook. Right. So there's a lot of valuable uh, questions that just statistically what we can do is provide answers that uh, can just ensure that uh, whatever that person is feeling on the way back, um, they know that there's people that felt the exact same way that they did. So they're not, again, abnormal in any way. Now, the other part of, of why we want so many cats to uh, collaborate is because if I wrote the book uh, by myself on the emotional side and Jody wrote the book on the logistical side, there would be an obvious bias towards this is a dangerous journey. And the reality is, is that it probably isn't. And so we want this handbook to be true. It has to be honest. And my truth is not necessarily fair or reflective to what the possibilities could be. And so every chapter is going to have advice and, you know, little vignette stories of what happened to people, uh, you know, beforehand. So, for example, you know, we're going to have a chapter because, it, you know, once you, you get that connection and you start making that decision and plan to go back to Korea, one of the first questions you know, that comes to mind is, um, who's going? Am I going by myself? Am I going with my husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend or partner? Am I going with them and my brothers and sisters and, and, and parents? What's the logistics? So, you know, Kyle, Travis, you guys, you know, went, you took the whole clan, right? Everybody went. And, um, you know, and other people, they, they just, they, they took their, their partner. And, and I went by myself. So, you know, uh, I'm, uh, I love my wife, but, uh, you know, I just felt I had to go by myself. And so we're going to provide uh, stories from real people that, uh, you know, will say, um, I went with my husband and I'm so glad I did. And then someone else will say, I went with my husband and it was the worst decision I ever made. Um, you know, I went by myself. I'm so glad I did. Or I went by myself and I really could have needed some help. And what that's going to do is it's going to uh, allow that person going to back to Korea in the future to really understand um, what are the pros and cons of each decision. And because they're more knowledgeable, they're going to be able to make a better decision because of it. Let me talk about the data, though, because you had asked about the volunteers. We are at 99 surveys, and our goal was 100, but we will be happy if we can get 125, 130. So if um, anybody in the audience 
has visited their, their birth parents in Korea or birth relatives in Korea, we would love for them to participate in the survey. Okay, great. All right, so one of the questions I have is that there are people, since it is a nonprofit, how do you guys, uh, since it is a nonprofit, how do you guys think you will be able to, to get funding to support yourselves in the group? Is there is there something that like, hey, I'm a CAD, but I'm not sure about this group. Is this money going to go to waste or is it going to be going to something that's really useful? How can you guys inspire CADs to involve themselves more in this group and to participate, participate financially? I think it's a good question, right? Because there's a lot of great causes out there. And one of the things that we don't necessarily want to do is we don't want to engage in a nonprofit hunger games mm. as far as why we deserve your support more than others, because that kind of goes against, you know, one of our core values, which is collaboration. So, you know, there is, uh, there are so many valuable and critical missions out there, whether uh, it ranges from adoptee citizenship um, to, um, you know, Korean heritage tours to go back to, back to Korea or, you know, what we're trying to do, which is, again, mental health advocacy, adopt the education, and eliminate cat suicide. So, you know, that, that support that we are, are striving to get, we, we are not necessarily going to be solely dependent on the generosity of cats. We are structuring something where we're going to be a significant player in mental health, which means that um, you know, we just added a, a significant component to our team, which is a grant writer. And we're going to be going after, you know, the grants that uh, address, you know, this problem. And, um, you know, we are also going to, uh, you know, Jody just talked about the series that the handbook can really kind of take a life of its own and, and really kind of support it and be um, a very positive revenue stream, but also serve as a, just such an incredible educational outlet so that people that are unfamiliar with the the challenges of, of either living with adoption or loving someone who is adopted um, can, can really find some some answers and, and potentially repair some damaged bridges and provide stronger connections. So, yes, we want funding from our brothers and sisters. Uh, no, we don't want it at the expense of uh, other incredible organizations out there. Um, you know, I think that, you know, even you know, there's organizations that are working on DNA testing. For all cats, how could we? Of course, we have to support that. There's organizations that are working on a um, a birth family portal, you know, where people can, you know, kind of marshal all the resources available to try and increase the probability of getting that match. Again, wonderful mission. We want to support absolutely. And, uh, you know, for those of you that are familiar with those projects, you know, we have your back. Um, we're rooting for you and, and we're one of your biggest cheerleaders. So, but we also know that um, most of the Korean American adoptee community is not connected on social media. Um, they uh, are who I was two years ago, just completely in denial of who they are. And those are the people that uh, when we have an, a, a compelling argument, you know, a uh, impassioned discussion as far as why it makes sense for them to um, come into our, our tent. Um, they're not going to be rejected. They're fine just the way they are. They're a cat. Um, th I, we, we feel that there's enough support from new members that uh, we can achieve a lot. You want to stress that it's not just the, finan the financial stuff that you're looking for through other Kades. They can offer other uh, skill sets or other uh, things that they could volunteer you know, the energy that, that we are looking for, we have a lot of things that we want to accomplish and achieve, you know? So, you know, Jody's mentioned some projects. Um, it's so hard for me because, you know, the projects are so just, they're so cool uh, and they're so groundbreaking and they're so innovative and they're so therapeutic. And what we know is that each and every project that we do is going to leave our community in better condition than we came into it. But we can't do it ourselves. We cannot do it alone. Um, I'm too old to operate social media, you know, and, and Jody's just too cool to do so. So she has this like way other cooler things to do uh, than that. So that means we just we, we need team members in all disciplines, you know, whether it's IT, uh, whether it's uh, at marketing, whether it's fundraising, whether it's volunteer recruitment. I mean, yeah, we have some really solid team leads, um, but, uh, you know, um, yeah, you know, many, many hands make life work. Yep. And so we have room for any of you that wants to make a difference, that wants to have a blast doing so. 
and wants to know that, that everything that they're doing is towards making our community a better one. I'd just like to add, you know, we are a nonprofit, so there's always going to be that ask. I think what makes us very different is we want to be an educational resource. So that would serve all the other, you know, groups because we all have that same journey. Uh, one of the areas that is not focused on is are the, uh, are the parents who adopted us. You know, when we start to explore our birth parents, it's like there's no guidebook for them of how to handle that. Um, I know that it's a difficult conversation for a, a lot of uh, adoptee children to have with their American parents. Um, you know, some parents feel like, what if I get replaced? Or did they not love me? Or do, did I not love them enough? And those are really important questions. And the other part to that, too, is, some parents, they just don't have the education of what is a detachment disorder. You know, why is this child always sad or why is my, why is my son or daughter not thriving? Um, they just want to push them in their own, you know, uh, culture. Maybe that's their culture is to just go to the next uh, achievement, um, whether it's high school diploma, college, and so on. Um, but those fractures of a, a detachment disorder are something that they could be educated on. And we want to do that in such a way that's just full of compassion to say, you know, thank you, uh, American adoptee parents who, who took us in. Um, this is not at all to be a journey of our own to point the fingers of all the wrongdoing, but this is, hey, this is our journey, and we, we acknowledge that you also have a journey um, that is full of your own, you know, grief and pain. And maybe, you know, you, you didn't handle us because you just didn't know any better. And uh, maybe you loved us and we didn't accept it. So there's that part. And I think having that audience uh, on board is a very new concept to a lot of the different uh, Korean adoptee groups. Another big demographic, I think, with amongst Korean adoptees is actually uh, Korean adoptees becoming parents themselves, such as yourself. Uh, yes. So like the you guys, I know I heard that you might be making resources for uh, Korean adoptees kids as well. Yeah, I have this vision because I've worked with, you know, cute little Korean children. Even just last summer, I served like 250 Korean children. And I was like, gosh, wouldn't it be great if we could put in their hands some kind of like children's book, mm -hmm. you know, with the little characters of GA and Manchik together and explaining like, what is this Korean adoptee and what is their experience in America? Because at first, you know, they're learning English, but also they're learning, learning about American education, mm -hmm. American culture, and this different group. And I think that the parents, the education systems over there will embrace it. You know, I'm going to say something a little controversial, which is that, um, you, know, you know, Jody's children, you know, when, the, when people in the United States are going to ask, like, what are you, right? Um, you know, what they have traditionally said is, you know, well, I'm a half Scottish and I'm half Korean. And I'd like to see that change a little bit to, you know, the answer in the future to be, I'm half Scottish and I'm half CAD. And, you know, our, our culture and what our experiences are as a CAD you know, we were just having a discussion about this in our, our leadership um, group a couple of days ago. And, you know, the reality is that, that there's a, a there's a large school of thought that trauma actually changes DNA. And so, and that is from a Korean term called Han. And Han is the pain and discomfort that one feels and that was passed on through thousands of years and many, many generations of suffering. Um, and it's just built up to this really uncomfortable feeling. Um, you know, a similar feeling would be like if your wife made you watch 90 Day Fiance um, for four hours in a row where you just want to just scream. Um, that's just kind of similar to what, to, to what Han is, right? But, you know, in all seriousness, here's the problem, is that the children of cats, we want to be proactive. We want to be ahead of the game. We don't want to be, you know, reactive. And what we can say is, look, if we know that trauma has changed uh, CADs and, you know, we, there's a strong possibility that trauma might also impact, uh, you know, the progeny of CADs, then we need to start preparing for when those children get to a point where um, they might start exhibiting some signs that, uh, you know, we can really be in a position to identify quickly um, and provide treatment that uh, is 
um, effective and 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 very specific to the um, the problems that uh, you know that they might you know commonly have. So you know, yeah, that that's the future. You know, it doesn't stop with just uh, us, the adoptees. Um, it goes well beyond that right, to what uh, Korean identity is and the potential health issues um, for, again, children of cats. I'll just give you a little example just as a mother, because I know there's several CAD mothers out there, mothers and fathers. Is For whatever reason, when I was young, I just didn't want to be hugged. And that's a weird thing to, especially American families, you know, they want to hug their, their children. And as a mother, I hugged my children, but maybe not as much as they may have needed. So, and those are things that it's like, it's not necessarily a bad thing, a terrible parenting thing. It's just, you know, as a Korean adoptee, we went through this experience and maybe hugging is just um, not something that is on the forefront of, you know, you know, what we need. So just that little sample, I've talked to other Korean moms and they're like, yeah, we just wanted our kids to achieve because we felt that was the right way to parent. Um, so there's a lot of that, that, there, you know, we might be able to give a great guidebook for. So one of the questions I have is, I understand you guys are making a book. Are you going to be able to have everyone who wants to have access to it to actually be able to read it? Is there going to be a digital download or how many printed. copies that are printed or other, other formats avenues. that you might consider? So that's a really good question, you know, and we've had a lot of dialogue about it. And, you know, so ultimately the plan is to offer the the handbook in both a, a physical, you know, actual book version mm -hmm. and also in an ebook format. And, you know, our, our commitment is that, uh, again, any adoptee that is going back to Korea will have this resource as a gift from us. And, um, you know, but, you know, uh, how accessible will it be? We're, you know, depending on our fundraising efforts, but we're, we're it's looking pretty good that we're going to be able to produce, you know, at least two, two, two to 500 uh, actual physical copies. And it's looking like the, um, the central location for that watch would be in Minnesota and Minneapolis. Uh, because there's so many cats there and it's in the middle of the country. Um, and then we'll provide, you know, our, our partner nonprofit uh, that where someone that's, you know, if they can demonstrate that, you know, they're going to Korea and they have a plane ticket or whatever, um, that book is absolutely for free for them. Um, and then we'll have the ability to um, also have it in ebook format for, for people. So, you know, there'll be many ways to, um, to access um, the guide. Another important point, uh, do we actually have a official release date for this guidebook? Well, you know, we got to, you know, this, this, the guide back cover is almost done and we're just waiting. And uh, we have these artists that just, uh, I, I think they just rather paint fences right now than just finish. <laughs> <laughs> we're a little bit frustrated with that because that's really kind of put us behind schedule and uh, we would have been ready to print it right now, but uh, we're just waiting. And when they get, no, uh, and, all, and all kidding aside, and you know, we're, we're, we're targeting, uh, you know, late August, early, okay. early September for that uh, release date. And uh, Jody, you, uh, you have any other details as far as like the, the event launch? You know, because again, and Jody's going to talk about this, but the world's been turned upside down. So we can't necessarily say we have a hard date if, um, you know, the pandemic gets worse or people aren't comfortable flying, um, you know, whatever that is. And so I, she's really been, I think, ahead of the curve on uh, what some contingency plans will be for our, our launch event. So, Jody, fill them in. Well, mid-September, because I'm on university schedule, and that's about the time that I can <laughs> uh, have available. Uh, here's my vision, and it could change. My vision is I would love to do a book launch party with, our, um, with a great group in Minnesota and potentially either Portland or L.A. And uh, because we have this uh, pandemic right now, my hope is to put together a smaller group than what we originally envisioned, but then maybe we would do that next step of Zooming with everybody who could support us. So that, that's what we're kind of toying with right now. So another important question is, you guys talk about all about the donation, but is there a link or a direction that you guys can go to a website that so, people yeah, can Yeah, I want to pay donate. you guys now. Take my money. 
There's several ways. There's a fundraiser going on through Facebook okay. uh, that we could definitely give you that link, but also right at www.gide foundation.org you can donate you can take the survey you can read more about us and you guys have a facebook uh, two facebook pages uh, from what i know uh, could you explain a more about those and where they can go for that one for the book and there's one for guide i believe yes so the guide foundation what i would say is the foundation that will produce all of the books okay so the book is one project of many to come. Okay. So are you guys able to uh, pretty much tell other people about maybe the current uh, sponsors or maybe you have some big groups that might people might know that they might be part of or is there any other details. organization out there that you can give details to other CAS that are interested? What other or organizations, I guess, have you been working with so far? Well, you know, we had uh, just uh, talked about the the survey mm -hmm. to Adoptee Hubs uh, function, okay. which was they, they did a series. Uh, it was a multi part series, and the one that uh, uh, we kind of showed up on was the actual reunion mm -hmm. uh, in, in Korea. And so there was a you know, you know, a wonderful panel there, and um, you know, I personally know some of them that uh, actually went through it. So you know, we got a chance to you know talk about you know, those people that have have experienced it to um, share their insights. And, you know, uh, Adoptee Hub was very gracious in inviting us to do so. And we want to help Adoptee Hub, you know. So they're the ones that are going to be uh, holding the books for us. And, um, you know, they're working on an incredibly cool project, which is that, uh, again, that birth family search portal. Um, you know, my one of my, you know, cat friends uh, that I've known personally in, in the Dallas Fort Worth area is the new president of 325 camera. And um, she's replacing Catherine Kim, who's done a, just an incredible job, um, you know, leading that organization for, for all these years. And I know everyone's excited for um, Linda's uh, leadership and vision. And, and that board is, is really, I think, going to accomplish a lot of great things. And they're just so you guys know, those are the, that's the organization responsible for um, sending out all the DNA kits to anyone that doesn't live in the United States. So, um, you know, in addition, um, just had a, you know, a wonderful conversation uh, with Adoptees for Justice. And uh, obviously we want to advocate and support, you know, their mission, which is to uh, ensure that the roughly 40,000 adoptees, many of whom are Korean adoptees, um, that don't currently have citizenship, um, you know, get it. And, you know, guys, this is the 13th year that we're trying to get this done. And, um, you know, the reason why we just fall short each and every time and, and can't get out of subcommittee is because we don't have the political capital. And we don't have the political capital because uh, what we need are organizations to say positive things about other organizations, be determined to work well together, uh, to be good partners. And, um, you know, the reality is this, right is right. And so I also seen that you wrote a message to Korean Quarterly. That's really big among the the Minnesota CAD community and the Korean. Didn't you put a post there, or I did? Yeah, uh, you know, I put a post on uh, you know a drawing that we um, you know I thought that uh, so you know we're really lucky because yes we have you know incredible cover artists and you guys, but we don't have slouches for the illustrations inside the book either. Um, and as a matter of fact, you know when you see their work, you know it's going to be. Uh, you know well, what's better the uh, the cover or the inside people i think it'd be a you know a dead heat um, and jody's daughter is actually participating in the illustrations exactly, as well yeah yep. so you know uh jody's daughter, daughter taylor um is illustrating the book and uh it's actually a lot of fun it's a blast because i get to go uh on zoom and uh she shares a screen and we just kind of just we just roll with it and she just starts drawing and then it says well what if we change that what if we tweak this you know this is a color that we want on that but um yeah two days ago we were working on so we had um uh, because there's gonna be so many illustrations in the book and you know, we, we kind of have like a, a to-do list of emotions or scenes that we really kind of want to cover and one of them was uh you know ga in, in a handbook and and, and and her happiness and so the reason why we submitted that one that was the first post to Korean Quarterly. And because what we wanted to do is we wanted to say, um, you know, look at this illustration, look how happy this little girl is. 
uh, in a handbook, which is the expression of our native ethnicity. And, and really what we want to do in the, in the guide is that pride and that happiness that that little girl felt, you know, little GA is, is so happy. Um, if our work and effort can allow uh, a cat to go back to Korea and let's say they try on a handbook for themselves or the traditional men's um, costume and they have that smile on their face and uh, it, it was partly because of what the advice we gave them. I mean, that's payment enough in, in my opinion. Tons of Korean adoptee organizations. There's AK connection in Minnesota. There's cam center in Minnesota. So based on my understanding, they are still working on trying to get sponsors. Um, the reason why I want to mention this is because I know there is Sung Choo Park. You people, you might know him, but he actually has a grant in which he takes first Korean adoptees for the first trip to Korea and hopefully to find the birth family and maybe go to orphanages and travel around Korea. The reason I mention that is because uh, I think it's really important because he's kind of a go-to guy when it comes to the Korean adoptee organization and meeting their birth family. So I'm hoping that when comes when it comes to the end that he'll be able to get a lot of sponsors in terms of what they really want for their intention of in the book. So I guess, are there any other last uh, messages that you want to tell people about your organization and book before we head off tonight? I think for me, I want to emphasize the word collaboration because we're um, the new kid on the block and people are wondering what, what are you all about? And we simply want to be the educational resource for all Korean adoptees and maybe even beyond in the future. Uh, but we want to partner with the different organizations out there and uh, absolutely be careful and respectful of what you guys are already doing. Yeah, you know, it's it's a it's not just in the nonprofit world, but you know, kind of a buzzword in the in the corporate world is siloing, right? And so everyone, you know, gets very possessive and jealous of their lane and, and their turf. And it's one where uh, if 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 what we're focusing on is the, I'm, I'm just going to be blunt. If we're more concerned about our own survival and viability versus the communities then what we're ultimately going to get is similar, you know, performance. And the reason why um, there are a lot of um, adoptees out there that, you know, have tenuously put their foot into the community and then, and then walked away to not come back is because we have to improve our collaborative efforts. Uh, we don't necessarily play well with each other. There's a lot of organizations that are doing the exact same mission, uh, but are fractured and, and there's some animosity. And, um, you know, one of the advantages of being, you know, as as uh, as Jody said, you know, the quote "new kid on the block" unquote is that um, we don't necessarily have any agenda, you know. But I we know what we know we're going to get attention. But what we want attention for is potentially a, a new way, a different way of of conducting ourselves, and where we really kind of again promote that uh, that collaboration. Um, you know, a rising tide should lift all boats. And so if it doesn't, then we have to kind of consider who the harbor master is. Um, and we want to be the best harbor master. We want, we want, there's so many good causes out there and they all deserve attention. Um, they all deserve support. And, um, you know, that's what we want to be. We want to be a unifier. So one of the last questions I have is related to the fundraising. There might be people wondering, well, where does my money go to? How much should I donate? Because I'm thinking like, uh, how much does it cost to make a book? You know, the, the beautiful thing about nonprofits is that uh, we're held accountable. Uh, and so, you know, if, if you, you know, waste money, you're going to get in trouble pretty quickly. So, you know, the the expenses of how much does it cost to uh, create a book? That's a really good question. Um, it, it's, a, it's a function of the printing partner that you select. It's a, a function of economies of scale. So your per unit cost of 2,000 copies is going to be far lower than if you make 10, right? It depends if uh, our artists insist on color uh, for their cover uh, because that drives the cover up uh, uh, just dramatically. 
Uh, it depends on do we want a hard cover or a soft cover. Um, you know, it depends on whether we want um, you know worksheets attached to the ebook. So there's a lot of moving pieces. Um, you know, people have uh, you know put a lot of work into the book and and deserve some you know compensation uh, for their time and, and effort. So there's that. Um, you know, there's marketing it that. Uh, so you know, sometimes when people look at uh, you know, you look at a pack of cigarettes, you know, a pack of cigarettes cost $7. Your actual cost of per cigarette is less than a penny. And so you think, oh, my God, that's outrageous. But, you know, when you look at, again, all the things that are involved in it and, and, and the benefit of us is that we're not necessarily trying to uh, attach a, a profit. Um, so there is no padding of that. So, you know, look, if after the costs um, are calculated, and the book ends up being nineteen ninety nine, then that's what we'll uh, you know we'll, we'll, we'll charge again. But for the the Korean adoptee that's going back to Korea, what's that charge going to be? Zero. Well, I mean, guys, someone has to pay for that book, right? So we're going to give that to them as a resource, but it still costs us money because no matter who our publishing partner is, they're not going to be like, oh, you guys are really cool and great, so we're just going to do it for free as well. It doesn't work that way. So that's what we're going for. So that what you saw. And that fundraising target was for the month of May. So, you know, and again, we want to be uh, open and we want to be fully transparent. So we go, hey, uh, in May, we want to raise uh, $1,000. And, and Jody's eagerly waiting till next, till Tuesday um, so that she can share what that uh, fundraising result was uh, for May. And uh, so, you know, overall, you know, budget wise, Jody, why don't you uh, chime in here with the, the numbers? Because she's more of the, uh, the financial guru than I am. Well, I can say that the May goal has been reached, but we're waiting to give the final numbers for that. And we're very excited about that. However, we have to uh, consider June and July. And to answer very simply, the money will go to labor, promotions, and publications. Uh, anything that is excessive over the goal for this project will roll right into the next project. I guess it's worth mentioning. Uh, they were originally gonna pay us five hundred dollars, like together, together. So it's two fifty a piece. But we decided to actually put that money back into the foundation. So you can thank Kyle and I for that. Thank you. And, and we can also thank you for that. So both Jody and I were very touched. Uh, we were very flattered. Um, and you know what? No, here's the thing, though. And, and uh, not to throw you guys under the bus, but I, I'm gonna share. A little bit of how you guys reacted when I said that that's uh, representative of your integrity and, and the content of your character. And you guys kind of got all squirmy, like, oh, shucks. But, um, you know, I've approached other people about, uh, you know, being artists or illustrators. And, you know, they came back with, with prices that were much higher than yours. And they weren't going to just, they weren't going to get I wanted to let everyone know we them. actually didn't offer a price at all because I feel like what they're doing in general is a necessity for Korean adoptees. So. Yes, but we also have to respect True. the fact that you guys are artists. Yep. And you know, the one of the things that artists, I think, sometimes get taken advantage of, right? Because there's almost an expectation that, like, the the trade is an exposure, right? So you'll do it for free, but then we'll say cover designed by the Bayless Brothers and, and back, and that's a fair trade. And no, it's not. The more people that buy the book, the more free copies we can give to those that deserve it. What I'm hoping is. First of all, I love your laugh. Every time you laugh, like one of you climbs up in your seat and it's just hilarious. It just brings me joy. But um, moving forward, like I hope that your gener you, your generosity, the spirit of you giving back to the foundation will just be contagious to all of your viewers because that's what it takes. I mean, I joke with Derek and even Moses because they put in so much time. I'm like, gosh, I think you guys need another zero on your paycheck, but we're <laughs> all volunteering. So, you know, <laughs> he's no one's getting uh, uh, rich by this. So. The, the question I had, I saw the website when I was kind of just browsing. You guys were hosting events. Do you plan to do more events? Yeah, like, like Zoom, Zoom, Zoom Derek, events. I think or... you do Zoom calls. I don't know. It was kind of it that. was kind of discriminatory. You only allow forty year olds and up. Well, okay, so um, sometimes when when you have different you know projects or brands, and then you cross promote, what ends up happening is a little bit of confusion, and that's something that you know Jody and I had a conversation about. the The pajama conference is. Uh, an independent project that uh, I and Susan Cox. So it's actually a really cool story how that came about. We don't have time for it right now, but some other time I'll be more than happy to share it. Um, 
as far as how this came to be. But just suffice it to say is that this success is what we're going to use to, um, you know, go to a major player in international adoption. Uh, I, I mean, a major player and tell them this is what post adoption services should look like. And we want you to take, take it over and, and continue it with the you know, stress on um, therapy, on post adoption, on, on trauma. So um, right now, so this Thursday will be the third pajama conference. And we call it pajama conferences because, you know, look, it's a pandemic. We don't care if you're wearing pants, but we're going to, we're going to talk about some serious stuff. But we're still going to be talking about serious things like a conference. And, um, you know, the first one we did, we talked about COVID-19 was topical and uh, East Asian scapegoating and how it impacted the cat community. You know, the second one we did was just really come to terms with well, who are we? So connection with our, our Korean uh, culture and heritage, uh, whether we're Korean, Korean American or, or a cat. This one coming up is going to be about Korean American adoptee um, male marginalization. You know, there's things it's just the cold, hard truth. Uh, guys, you know this better than <laughs> than anyone. Um, you know, we specifically as males, um, you know, we're outnumbered. Um, our voice isn't nearly as, as strong. Um, it really kind of envelops just overall invisibility of being an Asian male. But as a cat, it's even harder, right? Because, you know, we don't have an accent. Our parents are white. Our siblings are white. Um, you know, we like football. You know, you guys like Minnesota, you know, football probably. Vikings. Um, um, you should, uh, you know, like Penn State football. But, you know, so we have all these things. We check off all the boxes of what it means to be normal and yet we're still just invisible and just not wanted. So these and, Zoom uh, conferences and organizations, are they part of Guide or are they actually something totally separate? Are you going to combine them or? You know, that's going to be a discussion that Susan and I are going to have, you know, so I'm not really comfortable really um, discussing the direction of it because um, it wasn't my idea. Okay. It's something that, you know, we, we do together. We have a, a blast doing it. Susan um, is, is a great partner. And so because Susan isn't here, uh, guys, I just don't feel comfortable okay. saying what direction that's going to go. What I do know is that, um, you know, um, I'm one of the co-founders of Guide. I'm also one of the co-founders of the Pajama Conference. So there is, again, I think, uh, you know, a very strong um, complementary uh, element uh, to it. but as far as the overall future of whether a guide will incorporate it, I've been pushing for, for Jody to create uh, the guide foundation series that she and uh, some of our amazing volunteers could do. That's kind of similar. So, you know, I do another thing with, with Moses called the fireside chats uh, with, with, with Derek and Moses. And that's also independent, but again, very complimentary because um, we're both so heavily involved in, uh, in guide foundation as well. So, to, to circle back uh, the the collaboration that uh, Derek is doing with Susan, I'd like to say like Susan has been a very big supporter of Guide Foundation, and we're really happy for that. You know, it'd be an interesting idea. I'm a composer. I like to make music, but I can't sell. But what if people buy my music and I give part of it to a proceed for Guide Foundation? What do you think about that? We love it. You know, it would be great. You know, in addition, so one of the um on the upcoming schedule of the pajama conference, there was a lot of interest in having kind of like a, a CAD talent show, you know? So we might just, you know, hand over the 90 minutes of the pajama conference to, um, you know, the artist, the artist community of, of cats and have them. So if you wanted to perform in that, um, go for it. Sounds great. And we'll keep you guys updated when that conference will be, but I think that'd be kind of, uh, unique groundbreaking, right. To have a, a yeah. A concert online, free, via Zoom, book that party. hundreds of people will watch. So. Right? Book party. Uh, Moses would like to introduce himself. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah. So were there any left turn pages that you guys want to discuss about anything that we maybe missed? or? I don't think so. Okay. We'll just introduce Moses to you all. Hi, hi this is uh, uh, Moses, and uh, he wanted to pitch in. Hi, how, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you guys? It's nice to meet you too. So I, I guess I, uh, apparently you're kind of like the, the psychologist or therapist for the Korean Adoptee uh, uh, Guide Foundation. Could you describe a little bit more about your role? Sure. Uh, yeah. Thanks for um, 
asking. I am a uh, marriage and family therapist, and my role for the Guide Foundation is to be the mental health team lead, uh, which is a, a, a very uh, perfect role for me because I really enjoy what I do, and I've been in the field a very long time. Uh, so as a team lead, it's really about uh, uh, working on projects and putting really big ideas together, uh, starting with something that we're working on for next year. So uh, it's, it's a, very, uh, a very nice opportunity, and I really appreciate uh, that Derek and Jody have brought me on in this way. So are you aware that uh, there's quite a bit of Korean adoptee statistics with mental health issues? And have you, uh, is that why you became a therapist? Or could you tell me a little bit more about that? Sure. Uh, I, I, so I've been a therapist. I've really been in the mental health field about 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I came into adoption uh, by way of working for an, uh, a very well-known adoption agency. Uh, it's one of the, the oldest in the country. And it really, at the time, was a, a childhood dream of mine to support and help uh, my fellow adoptees and fellow orphans. And uh, I was like, this is it. This is uh, the most wonderful thing. Uh, and that was about 10 years ago. So I've really been uh in the adoption field itself for about a decade and my perspective has changed quite a bit since then and i've become much more uh aware of and uh very much more of an advocate for post-adoption services which is very lacking uh and there isn't a whole lot of research, and there isn't a whole lot of support. And something um, uh, that Derek and Jody uh, and the Guide Foundation are doing is something that has not been done before uh, and very, very much needed. Uh, so I can say that having been in, in this side of uh, the adoption field on the mental health side as an active therapist working with uh, a range of uh, uh, adoption uh, services and families. Um, yes, uh, we need to be doing a whole lot more, and I'm I'm just so happy that uh, uh, Jody and Derek. Uh, I can't praise them enough. Really, uh, they're starting something up that that's uh, very much needed. I guess my 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 curiosity leads to this is that since you're a licensed and marriage therapist is that what it is or uh or it, it, it's a, a licensed in marriage and family therapist okay so my question is is that i'm currently on medical assistance and assistance and medicare do you guys take would you take that as a insurance or how do you guys provide people how do you guys provide a service when people don't have insurance or that's just my curiosity on how it's going to be structured or is it voluntary or you plan on doing something similar to that mm, that's a really good question uh uh and that's something that we are uh, we're exploring a range of uh different ideas um but uh I could tell you in general, as a general therapist, general practitioner, uh, yes, uh, insurance, insurances are taken, um, which is a nice thing. Uh, and right now, uh, and I think this is kind of getting off your point about what we're going to be doing as the foundation. Um, but uh, just to give you a little background on right now, we're typically uh, restricted to practice in the state that we're licensed in. Um, but uh, during this time, uh, those restrictions have been lifted. So we're able to provide therapeutic services uh, across states. Um, but like this is the first time uh, in history, really. Uh, so 
but as far as the Guide Foundation, uh, we are exploring a range of different things. Uh, and uh, you bring up a good point about offering direct service. Yes. And uh, so providing direct service is certainly a, a very needed thing. One thing I could, I could probably tell you right now is we are looking for and we are seeking out uh, other uh, Korean adopted therapists and starting to bring together a community of um, CAD therapists and seeing where they are and saying, hey, let's come together, let's form a, a community uh, uh, so we can really support, our, uh, support ourselves. Yeah, and if I could jump in real quick, you know, I think, uh, guys, you, you ask a really good question, but in answering that question, it's going to illuminate why uh, we at the Guy Foundation are taking the path that we're taking. And it, it's kind of, sometimes it doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Because if we know what the problem is, why don't we just dive right into it right now, right? Why don't we just start tackling, you know, addressing cat suicide? It's for the same reason why you see uh, emergency uh, personnel, you know, why do firefighters not run to the fire? Why do they take their time? Because in rush, mistakes happen. And um, in, in this area, what we know is that, uh, you know, very similar to the first rule, the Hippocratic Oath, which is first do no harm, first do no harm. And, you know, Moses' experience uh, and the 20 years that he has uh, as a therapist and with uh, just an intimate knowledge, um, both on uh, both sides of the chair, right? So, um, you know, experiencing uh, adopt adoption as a CAD and also treating it um, in, in therapy. We, we just can't think of a better person to lead that team, but we, you know, that team and what he's creating um, with that uh, cohort of, of CAD therapists is that they're going to really assess and analyze this uh, situation um, with uh, the gravity of everyone aware that yes, we have a problem, um, but uh, it would be far worse for us to, with all the best intentions in the world, end up doing more damage than, than, than good. And, you know, Jody has her skills. Um, she's not a therapist and I have my skills and I most certainly am not a therapist. Um, which is probably a, a good thing for the world that I'm not, but Moses is, and we do have some very uh, smart, talented, and capable therapists uh, within the CAD community, and it's going to be their expertise. Um, we, we trust experts. Um, they went to school for a reason, and they have all that experience for a reason, and uh, so when they come back at, uh, towards the end of the year and announce what that uh, recommendation will be, we'll know that uh, they took that mission very seriously. And something that, you know, we talk with Moses all the time um, and we just stress to him, you know, it's not a rush. Um, what's what's absolute paramount that is the highest quality and, and, and most thought out solution. So when you guys asked about direct payer, you know, if we just, you just dove right into it and then we go, oh crap, we didn't think about that. It just, it just makes us look less competent, um, less, less capable. And, uh, and a solution that's rushed. And it's too important. Lives are uh, on the line. And so they're going to have, you know, uh, enough time to really, you know, flesh out every possible scenario, every angle. And what we're confident, what we know, is that when they come back to us with their recommendation, it truly will be the best option for our community. So I guess, is there any other last tidbits that you guys want to say, or should we call it a night? I would uh, like to add that uh, with Moses and Derek's recommendation, we added suicide resources to our website. And I think that's really important to know for, uh, to just see what this mission is and that we are serious. And if um, anybody in your audience is really struggling, they could step by our website and we've got a list of phone numbers and including an online chat as well as a text that they could uh, use to get support. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. We appreciate it. Where's the survey, Jody? You can find the survey at www.guidefoundation.org, or we can send a link in your uh, YouTube uh, text. <laughs> well, we
we don't really need to because we think that we're gonna make a lot of money on used thong uh, sales on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Cut, cut, cut. <laughs> we're gonna drive to we're gonna drive to Minneapolis and uh, engage in some uh, male lingerie. Thing. <laughs> and, uh, I figure we will not only be rich enough to fund all our missions, but Joey and I can possibly, you know, retire to uh, you know matching vacation homes. So, that's, that's really our strategy going forward. Well, I mean, we have enough volunteers that are going to donate those thongs, so we don't need any more <laughs> volunteers in, in the thong department. We are at capacity, and if you ask Jody, we're actually over capacity on that. She doesn't <laughs> have the thong team by at least two, right? And we only have two members on the thong team. Yeah, about $975. I think that'll really kind of get us uh, over the hump. So just that extra 15 Can you write by the thong brothers instead? <laughs> Um, maybe for your copy, that will get to your dad. Uh, but for, for general publication, you know, again, boys, we want people to buy the book. <laughs> so, there you go. That's the market yeah. everyone has to remember. And, um, you know, illustration, an artistry by the Song Brothers is, is going to be a tough sell. <laughs> so, Do you care so if I wear no pants? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh I don't want to know, you know? Just, I don't want to see it, but you could be smiling there going, I'm not wearing pants. I don't care. But, so I heard that you're partner partnering ship with uh, uh, Fireside Thong Chats, too? Well, um, I, apparently as soon as we're done, we're doing Fireside Thong Chats. <laughs> <laughs> that, that will yeah. not be under Guide Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, I, I think I could see that as a great thing to have, if you're open to it, have you be a source of entertainment for our book launch party. That's fine. Are you comfortable? Fully, fully clothed, guys. I fully clothed. clothed. So, so, so get that thought out of your head right now. Can so, I? Just, can I? Can I just wear my birthday suit? <laughs> Only if it's your birthday. <laughs> so. Is there anything else? This has been a pretty long video, so maybe we should probably cut it off pretty soon. We always can have more uh, chats, I'm sure, in the future. Thank, Thank you, guys. Good job. Thank you for your work and effort. All right, so now we're going to do the uh, the more fun one, right? I need to leave. Uh, Jody, Jody can scram. You know, yeah, she can leave on that. Moses, you might not be comfortable with this one either. Right? This might get a little bloody. I don't know. No, no, no. Well, thank, thanks, you guys. I, I appreciate you letting me jump in. Glad you could jump.